I'm going to start by describing a certain type of animal. And I want you to picture in your head what it is you think I'm describing. These animals love to eat insects. And some of these insects spread diseases to humans, like malaria, dengue, and Zika. Others of these animals love to eat vegetation, especially vegetation in rivers, which is important because it helps keep the water clean that many of you may drink. In addition to them eating lots of insects, lots of other animals like to eat them. Some of them have dry, bumpy skin, while others have smooth, wet skin. And this is the first group of animals in the world to be facing a mass extinction event since the time of the dinosaurs nearly 65 million years ago. So what kind of animal do you think that I'm describing? Raise your hand if you were thinking about a frog. My work to save frogs from extinction in Honduras started nearly 10 years ago when I joined a British conservation group called Operation Wallacea in Kusuko National Park. This park is an amazing cloud forest located in the Morendon Mountains, not far from here in San Pedro Sula. Many plants and animals found in these mountains are found nowhere else in the world, and especially the amphibians. My work there was to help document what lives in these mountains, while other scientists were working and doing the same for the plants, the insects, the birds. And altogether, the purpose of our work was to help show the people and the government why this place was so special to protect, because right now it is being destroyed. So I spent two months living in this forest, literally waking up inside the clouds, hiking across cold mountain streams, and climbing trees dripping in moss and plants looking for tree frogs. But aside from all the fun, I also sat through some of the most intense tropical storms of my life, <laughs> ran out of all my two months of dry clothes in the first seven days, and worked some of the latest hours of my life because since frogs are nocturnal, I had to become nocturnal too. By the time I had finished my expedition, it was a life-changing experience. It was my first time in a rainforest, a place I'd always dreamed of, and it was my first time in a country that I knew very little about. Before coming to Honduras, the little that I had learned was mostly about safety and, and crime and risks, but no one had told me about the amazing biodiversity that you have all across the country, or about the amazingly warm and welcoming people I would meet all along the way. If you don't already know, I love frogs, <laughs> and especially the ones that live here in Honduras. They come in so many colors, shapes, and sizes, and if you've worked with frogs as long as I have, you would learn that each individual frog has a personality just like people do. While I was preparing to come back for my second year in Honduras, I learned about a terrible disease event that was spreading around the world, killing frogs, making them disappear, and even go extinct. This was caused by something called amphibian chytrid fungus, Batrachochytrium dendrobatidus, and it is an ancient pathogen that lives in the water, in the lakes and rivers, latches on to the skin of a frog, burrows in, and eventually causes tiny frog heart attacks. It is such a serious disease event because it could affect nearly any species of the 7,000 known species of amphibians in the entire class amphibia. The world has never known a disease event like this before. It's similar to saying that one single flu virus could affect any mammal, meaning a flu that could kill a human, could kill a mouse, could kill a whale. But right now, it's happening to frogs. This pathogen has been detected in at least 60 countries, if not more, and it's still spreading. As I was preparing to return to Honduras and learning more about these amazing frogs in the mountains in Cusico, I was alarmed to read reports suggesting that these frogs were disappearing too. 
And even though there is some deforestation up in the mountains, 10 years ago, there was very little. And I was concerned, why would these frogs be disappearing? So I decided to conduct my first independent investigation, and I was supported by a National Geographic Young Explorers grant to see whether chytrid fungus was here in Honduras. I spent another two months living in this forest, catching hundreds of frogs, and testing every single one through a skin swab that we, we checked with DNA analysis to see whether chytrid was there. Unfortunately, it was not hard to find. It was everywhere, and especially in these endangered species that were said to be disappearing. It was at this point that I had to make a really important decision in my life. As a scientist and a biologist, would I continue traveling around the world, going from country to country, seeing new places, new species, satisfying my thirst for exploration and adventure, or would I choose to dedicate myself to saving these frogs sticking down in Honduras and really trying to understand how can I make a difference with what I had learned. No one had ever before been able to save frogs from extinction from chytrid in the long term. And we still haven't 10 years later. But for me, the choice was clear. I felt a deep responsibility after discovering that there was a problem, knowing that I was one of the few people that knew that these animals could be lost if we don't do something soon. And I decided that we had to take some sort of action. People often ask me, at what point did you choose to be that person that saves the frogs? But I think of it more as, it was the frogs that chose me, and I was just ready to be their voice. <laughs> so now, fast forward 10 years, and I'm still here, still working in Kasuko, still trying to learn how can we best protect these species from extinction. What I've learned is that the way that this disease is killing the frogs here is that it's mostly killing the baby frogs as they come out of the water and, and grow into adults. The reason why that's so bad is that it means that the population of adults that are left to breed is getting smaller and smaller. So a way that we could try to reverse this trend is if we could somehow rescue these baby frogs. That's why I've helped organize an international rescue effort in Honduras called the Honduras Amphibian Rescue and Conservation Center, which is an international effort involving amphibian uh, experts from the United States, from Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo and Aquarium, the Detroit Zoological Society, here with the National University of Honduras, and in Tela, Lancetia, Lancetia Botanical Gardens, which is where we are located at the moment. And what we are is inside these two ocean shipping containers, we retrofitted this into an amphibian hospital. We've hooked it up to electricity, climate control, and plumbing to replicate the environment of Kasuka National Park. And starting next year, once we open officially, we hope to save at least 1,000 frogs a year inside this facility. We'll be going to Kasuko, collecting baby frogs before they die from chytrid, transporting them here to the safe environment inside this facility where we can minimize the risk of death and disease, and then re reintroduce the adult strong frogs back into the rainforest. Our intent by doing that is to hopefully have more animals breeding in the wild naturally so that there's more offspring, and although they will also be exposed to this disease, there'll be more of them. So the small percent that survive will hopefully be more, and we just want to help natural selection be able to pick the strongest survivors so that eventually they don't need our help anymore. But in the meantime, we can't let them go extinct. There's three species of frogs that I'm specifically focusing on. Many more need help, but we only have so much resources right now. So there's three that we think are most likely to go extinct in the near future if we don't do something right away. And that includes this one, the Kusuko spike thumb frog, Plectrohyla dazipus, which is only known from Kusuko National Park and critically endangered. Its larger cousin, which is also critically endangered, this is the exquisite spike thumb frog, Plectrohyla exquisita, which is nearly the size of your fist. And the mossy red-eyed frog, Duomenohyla seralia. By now, some of you might be asking yourselves, what's the big deal with frogs? 
Why are these people spending so much time and money and effort trying to save frogs when there are so many other problems that we also need to work on? The reason you need to care is because everything in nature is connected, and we are all part of nature. The health of the environment, of wildlife, and people is connected. As I mentioned earlier, frogs help control insects that spread diseases to people. They help keep the water clean that many of us drink, and they help maintain balance in the environment. If all the frogs were to disappear, other animals would also start to disappear that rely on them for food. Over millions of years, nature has formed a system of resilience. When extinction happens, it's able to adapt. But the problem is that now, because of human activities that cause habitat destruction and the spread of disease, species are going extinct so much faster than ever before. And now, nature cannot recover from that on its own. Sometimes, a working ecosystem with all of its species, when it's healthy, is compared to that of a working airplane, with so many moving parts representing different species and so many nuts and bolts and screws. And one by one, as a species goes extinct, another screw comes off the plane. The plane still looks like a plane, and it still flies. But at some point, you take one more off, and then you crash. And I feel that we really need to prioritize the importance of wildlife and keep putting these screws back in the plane before we're left trying to fix a plane after it crashes. And speaking of planes, you might be asking, well, where did this problem come from in the first place? And in the big picture, it's because over the past several decades, the world has become so connected through planes and, and just the movement and the ease with which we can get around the world, we also move animals. And 100 years ago, you couldn't move a sick animal halfway around the world in a matter of hours. And that stopped diseases from spreading. But now, we do. We, we trade millions and millions of frogs every year all around the world for food, for pets, for research. And sometimes, people let them go. They escape accidentally. And this spreads disease. I want frogs to be hopping around Honduras forever, eating the insects that make you sick, cleaning the water that you drink, and maintaining balance in the ecosystem. But this future depends on the choices we make today. I want Honduras to become an example for other countries in Central and South America when they decide to save their frogs too. I've decided to fight for the frogs, and I hope you will too. I'd like to end with some wise words from Kermit the Frog, who says, it seems to me that if you wait until the frogs and toads have croaked their last to take some action, you've missed the point. Thank you.